Hello there. In today's session, we're going to be looking at how to set up a very simple cash flow forecast. When you're first setting up in business, um, it's important that you actually make sure that you've got some real idea of what's happening with your cash. If you've got a lot of transactions, I suggest that you do this on a weekly ba for a weekly basis. But if you don't have so many to start off with, then maybe you can do it on a monthly basis. But it's really important that you actually do it. So uh, what we need to do is just state cash flow forecast. So all I've done here is just open up a an Excel spreadsheet. Um, I'm using a Mac, but the same thing applies for uh, uh, Windows as well. So the first thing we need to do, supposing it's the month of August, the first thing we need to do is make sure we, we include all of the income that we're expecting into our bank account for the month of August. Now let's suppose that we get, we're expecting to get 20 sessions at £30, £35 let's say, a session. So we just insert it there and then to put a formula in we go equals and then just type in the number 20 times by 35 notice it's a little star so um, uh, that's what happens and then you press return and it does the calculation for you I do love Excel and then where we've assuming that's the only income that we've actually got the only cash that's coming into our bank account in that month we just put the 700 if we're going to get some interest we would include that as well interest received that is uh, but I'm assuming for this that we're not so to get uh, a summation we go auto sum and it automatically does it for us. We can extend or increase the, the range as well. I'll include that for now. Now if we want to do a format what we do is go format, cell, border, top, bottom, OK and that's our total cash inflow. And by cash, I'm in here, uh, cash, checks, standing orders, anything that goes into the bank account uh, that's incoming, if you like. And then on the other side of the uh, income, we have expenditure. Now, obviously, the first session will be the room rental. Now, the room rental, I'm assuming if we've got, we might need to pay by the session, which would be great. So assuming that we get charged uh, 20 sessions at five pounds per session. So if you remember to get a formula, you go equals 20 times by, which is just above the eight. It's like the capital of the eight, uh, five, and that works out at a hundred pounds. Now, if for example, you have to rent a room um, whether you've actually got a, a session or not, you'd need to input the real cash that's going out of your bank account each month. So you might have to put that figure in there instead. Then you're going to have things like advertising and marketing. And for this month, you might say, right, OK, I need to spend £150. And if we need to extend, we just take that, see that little sign up there then just drag it across and then we might have subscriptions to our governing body for example and so we complete all of the expenditure that we've actually got per the month and in the same way we take it we go auto sum and at the moment we've got 250 but we'll have to we obviously will will have more um, lines that we have to complete so what I've done here is uh, to keep things brief, uh, in best Blue Peter tradition, here's um, something I prepared earlier. So we've got the forecast for August. We've got income total cash in of 700. Our expenditure, our total cash out, including our petty cash that we put in as £10. And this thing called drawings. What that means is it's a salary that we pay ourselves and the total, as I've shown here, the total cash out is 627. So our total in, in, inflow or outflow is our total cash out and a total cash in the summation of that. And that to show that in terms of a um, formula, 
So what we do is we go equals. So we take our total cash in plus seven, uh, plus B8, which is uh, 700. And then we take away minus all the cash out, B22 in this case. And then the calculation's done for us. Now I'm assuming here that we've actually put into the bank at the beginning of the month £100 to set ourselves up. So if we have £100 in, we have net inflow. This is just literally picking up this figure from up here. So to, to do that I'll just show you. It's equals and then we just take our cursor up, click on the cell and press return. And then the calculation is done for us because I've put that formula in already. And that is literally equals this figure here, whoops, plus this figure here, 173. We do exactly the same process in September. We work out how much our income is going to be, what our various expenditure is going to be. So for example, we might have a lower advertising and marketing. We might have lower subscriptions or no subscriptions in this case. So we might think we can afford to pay ourselves a bit more that month. Again, that formula, I just copied it across. To copy it across, you go onto the previous one. And then if you're on a uh, Windows, you right click with um, uh, a Mac, it's a uh, control click and you go copy and you click on the cell that you actually want to put it into and then right click again and go paste and what it does it calculates the it does the same it transfers the formula across so in in the month of September we're expecting to get a net uh, inflow of 70 so the thing you'll notice here is that I've picked up so I put a formula to say that the bank balance brought forward for this month of September is going to be the balance carried forward from our August. So again in terms of the formula I've just gone equals plus oops or even plus <laughs> and I've just picked up this figure the carry forward figure from the last month is the brought forward figure for this month. So the 173 and then I've got the same I've just copied those Um, cells across. So if I go copy and go to the ones I want and go paste and it inserts the figures. So the 173 plus the net inflow of 70 gives us a total bank balance carried forward at the end of September that we expect of 243. And you continue along in this process for the whole year. And if you find out, for example, that in one year, one month, you don't have sufficient outflow, or if you're going to have a negative bank balance, you need to make sure that you actually reduce the amount of drawings that you've actually got. So that in, in itself is a very simple cash flow forecast. And if doing things on the computer really freaks you out, then you can do basically the same principle on pieces of paper, list down all your income, list down all of your expenditure, take the difference between your income less your expenditure to find out what's gone in or out in that month and then add that if it's an inflow to your bank balance brought forward and then you can compare that eventually against your bank statement and in the next session I will show you uh, how to put in actuals because you need to control what's actually happening happening versus what you're forecasting and in the session after that I'll actually show you how you can do a bank reconciliation. And that's it for now. Uh, have fun and keep it simple.